gradually mingled with concert groups and took on their cultures and their ways. So obviously the hearing saw something in those other cultures that they were going to like and use uh, from those groups. Get a video brand. So they became farmers. So they just weren't going to be nomadic herders, uh, all of them. They were going to be farmers as well. So concert groups took on the cultures and the ways some became farmers in that regard. <laughs> Raja, tribal chiefs that were the warriors or war leaders. Rajas were the uh, tribal chiefs, uh, the Aryan tribal chiefs that were the more skilled warriors. And obviously, like I said, uh, they were conquering groups that came in, uh, took over, and obviously the Aryan civilization obviously had declined about 400 years prior to that. So there's probably a lot of uh, weakness within the, the Indus uh, River area. There was nobody that was dominant at the time, so it was easy picking for them. Different tribes that never band themselves together. Nobody uh, united them, kind of like uh, David united the uh, Hebrew tribes, or they were feuding with each other. Right? These uh, chiefs obviously saw something in those other groups, even though they were the same. Even though they were all Aryans, they didn't necessarily get along. It's kind of like not getting along with your neighbor. Right, their dog maybe poops in your yard. You don't want to. You want to do something about that dog, or their cat comes over, or whatever the case may be. Or one farmer's livestock get into your wheat field, or whatever. And obviously, you don't like it if they don't offer to pay for the damages. All right, in that regard. But the Rajas of the uh, Aryan tribal chiefs were the most skilled war leaders. All right, they had rivals among the Rajas. So obviously, they looked across the fence and said, "Hey, I'd like to have what they have. They look weak. Let's take them over." Now I can. Now I can be the leader of two uh, tribes versus one. The Aryans had their own class society, and a rank class society with the priest at the top. Religion was the top player, so to speak. All right? The Brahmins were those priests. Now, some of these names, I'm not going to have you write them, obviously. Uh, and I don't know if I even ask questions on their uh, class ranking consider because those. But I might have their priest origins at the top of their class society. That would be a, probably a, a question. That I have. You also have to take a look at the second in line there, the Kasimrayas, the warriors, and I'm not saying those words right by, end, by any stretch of the imagination, but the warriors were second. Now you take a look at those first two, and you're going to visualize that these two probably aren't self sufficient, that they rely on the third group, all right, to feed them, all right, to provide clothing for them, but uh, and all the uh, things necessary for them, uh, those first two groups to be successful. So the third group. Uh, the Vashyas, or the herders, the farmers, the artisans, which are the skilled workers, and the merchants, who are the people that trade. This group had a lot of significant influence. Uh, and again, if this group could ever group themselves together, which eventually in time they probably were going to, right? But early on they did not. It kind of reminds me of the 1970s when wheat prices were so terrible for a while, where farmers had that. Uh, one, the, the, the notion was that all farmers, if they hold their wheat off the market, it's going to increase the price of wheat, which is exactly probably what would have happened. The problem is, is not everybody's in the same financial boat. That farmers uh, simply sell their wheat when they need some cash flow and it's hard to pay for some bills, and that's exactly what happened. Not everybody could hold their wheat for 10 years or five years or three years or two years when the price goes up. All right, but this group had some influence because of the things that they did. It's just that they could never group themselves together. Or get the, them group themselves together to hurt the other two, or at least that's how I see it. And then the last group uh, in their social class rank is the Sudras. All right, group of little or no Aryan heritage, which is the, the groups that they were going to conquer, which they kind of put at the bottom of the totem pole, which is kind of too bad. Now, obviously, that's going to lead to a little bit of bitterness. Not that the Aryans treated their uh, people badly at times, it's just that they didn't put them in a higher social class. Maybe the Sudras could move up, I'm not really sure. All right, you could probably put yourself in good uh, accord if you became a warrior, if you were going to fight in their army. All right, and then again, you probably take a look at the sutras, maybe work on some so type, hot. Right, oh, as well. So now, Andrea, this was the oh. Indian people whom the Aryans had conquered, they were those sutras type. Now, you got to remember that the Aryans, uh, obviously, the Dravidians were probably uh, a majority. Right. It's kind of like the minority Aryans governing the Dravidians, the majority. And obviously, that doesn't always sit well. If you take a look at uh, recent history in the South Africans, uh, the, the, the whites there who were the minority, who were 
uh, uh, governing the, the, the majority, which is the Africans uh, that were already there. Instead of them living in harmony with each other, there was just a moral uh, in the 1880s. And Nelson Mandela had his plight with uh, solidarity and equality in South America. All right, but the Dominicans were the Indian people whom the Aryans had conquered, and obviously this group you know, always felt a little bit slighted, so to speak, uh, in their dwellings with uh, the Aryans. And I think that's supposed to be Abraham or Abe. What the name? Is that supposed to be Abraham? No, or Abraham. Idea of a, a drama, a drama, a drama. Drama? Where, drama. Where there's a way at the end. No A at the end. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. That's the idea of Brahma. Brahma is the single spiritual. Entity. What is Brahma? Brahma is the name of their single spirit. Why do you have it? I have no well, idea. I just told you to eliminate the A button. I don't care what you do. It's wrong. I need to know how to spell it. B R A H A M. Brahma. Okay. So we got the Dominicans were those Indian peoples uh, whom the Aryans had conquered. Aryans were polytheistic. Which uh, means that they were uh, believed in many gods. All right, plain and simple. Their chief god, though, their chief god, the Aryans, was their war god known as Indra. And here's one of those uh, key terms that we had at the beginning the Indra, the chief god of the Aryans, and he was the war god. Now, obviously, they had others, and we're going to talk about them in a little bit, but Indra was their chief god, their war god. And obviously, they continued to be warlike. Uh, as time went along, uh, they considered themselves warriors. Not all of them convert, converted to farming. Uh, they depended upon the people to pay themselves, uh, provide the army with food, much like the priests also did. And I'm sure that they had a system of sure to break down and give uh, those uh, individuals food to, to live off of. Now, uh, when the Aryans lived, their lives changed, their religious uh, ideas changed as well. And, and they were going to convert to a little bit more monotheistic practices, a little bit, all right? A Brahma was a single spiritual power that exists beyond the other gods. They had one that was going to be the god. I think that there weren't uh, other lesser gods. There uh, were going to be, you know, one that was the, 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 the number one, all right? Maybe even took the over for the Indra, I would mention, because a single spiritual power that exists beyond other gods. So as time goes along, their religion became... A little bit more complex and a little bit more complex and a little bit more complex. They started to think uh, it out a little bit more. All right, maybe they wanted more out of it. Maybe they wanted a, uh, a religion with a little more substance. I'm not really sure, but uh, as you can see, that you know, even uh, growing up, you know, you don't always stay uh, a little toddler. That you're you're going to learn how to to walk, to talk, and to, to to know values and and so on and so forth. But uh, one of the things that they did, the two or more cultures of acculturation, the term that comes up with acculturation when two or more cultures blend together, such as Aryan and Dravidian culture, meaning that they were going to group themselves together. But uh, eventually they're going to intermix. You got to take a look at the Aryan group were bringing their uh, males with their army. They weren't bringing their wives in, and obviously they were going to marry Dravidian women. All right, so therefore that blending of culture is going to exist. Not every area is going to be dominant over their wife. All right, no different than some of us have to answer to our wives once in a while. Or we'll answer I hate that. She's so picky. Okay. But anyway, you got the child sport. Two so more dumb. cultures blend together, such as the Aryan and Dravidian cultures. So the Aryan epic poem. Aryans, you know, they were kind of the dramatic. Vita and the Vita Gage, and, uh, them making an impact. And obviously, they wanted to carry their culture on. They did through their epic poems. The Maharata, India's greatest epic. It tells of very Indian It's kind of like our history book. Talk about uh, World War I, World War II, uh, the Vietnam War, which obviously we're not really proud of, but uh, we got involved in the Korean War, the Civil War, a better example. <laughs> All right, the greatest epic, the Maja Maharata, <laughs> the greatest epic, it tells of Aryan Indian tells. And then uh, the second one, it teaches values of behavior, which obviously they want to carry out is the uh, Ramea. The Ramea teaches values of behavior. Aryan epic poem. And, you know, realistically, they were carrying on their culture by. That's uh, okay over there, uh, telling those things over and over and putting them in 
home so that they would be carried on. Now, section two deals with uh, religion, mm. all right, and how it was going to uh, progress, all right? Two main religions that we're going to talk about is Hindu and Buddhism. One is going to thrive, but the other is going to branch, and both of them are going to try to branch out. Uh, Hinduism was going to thrive in India. Buddhism was going to get started in India, but it's going to fade away. All right, maybe because the Hinduists, uh, you know, kind of let it uh, fade away. All right, they really didn't coexist together. Did for a while, but they didn't coexist. And Buddhism was going to uh, thrive and do well in other countries in Southeast Asia. All right, Vietnam, uh, sometimes in China, all right? Cambodia, Thailand, and those are, are Buddhist in nature, but. Those are the two. Now, we also talked about reincarnation. We've talked about it a little bit before. Coming back in another animal or, or life form. Karma, Cassidy is the uh, class system. Karma, I'm not really sure about the definition. We'll get to it, though. Siddhartha Gautama is the uh, person who founded Buddhism, and there wasn't a founder of Hinduism. We're going to see that here in a little bit. Eightfold Path, the Four Noble Truths, obviously, dwell on those two religions and what they stand for. Now, uh, when we talk about Hinduism and Buddhism, Keep in mind that they're pretty oh. philosophical. Deep thinking religion, that they Why? give you something to think about, all right, in terms you of, you know, their phrases and so forth. Once well, again, begins. All right, that's that, that, that uh, you know, signifies that, that deep thought, thought process in that um, uh, philosophical way of looking at things. Like, but like I said, the two major religions of ancient India, not that difficult, Hinduism and Buddhism. All right, keep <coughs> Buddhism is coming up here. Can I move it up? Hinduism itself. We'll talk more a little bit about Buddhism right now. Uh, Hinduism had no single founder. Nobody can say uh, be labeled as the founder of Hinduism. All right, Hinduism kind of took uh, things from different uh, religions that you know had existed before. Maybe it was the Indus civilization, the Aryans, the Dravidians, and they kind of lumped it together. So there's no one person that can be fingered as saying. They were the founder of Hinduism, right? And not be thankful. But they developed through the beliefs of different groups of people, which is kind of interesting. Is or maybe that's the reason why it uh, survived in India and Buddhism did not, because Buddhism had a single founder, right? We'll talk about Siddhartha Gautama here tomorrow. But developed uh, due to the beliefs of different groups of people, which you know it's kind of a, a religion for the people, I guess you could say, because. Uh, uh, different people had some connection to it, or different groups had some connection to it. Are you sure? Yeah, this is a pretty intense stream. I know. I mentioned philosophical. Off, guys. All right, I mentioned we'll philosophical. We'll get, we'll get Hinduism is um, one of the world's most complex religions. And I, and, I, and, I say, oh, hey, come on. and I say that. Huh? I keep not done yet. Uh, the page, man. I say that because of the phrases that they come up with. The eightfold path. Tristan, really? Yeah. Webster. Hinduism is one big melting pot of religion. Do you know what happens when you make a religion? I wonder what happens if I went to live and then you went live and we played the cameras at each other. This should repeat itself through. Mm -hmm. It's pretty weird. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't care. Right now we're watching Mackenzie play a game. Yep. No, it's Jersey playing. We got Hinduism. It developed due to the beliefs of different groups of people. Hinduism is the world's most complex religion. One of the most complex. Now, they didn't say it's the most complex, one of the most complex. But it's because of the philosophical thought process. For instance, in Hinduism, one force underlies everything. Now, that isn't philosophical, it doesn't it? One force underlies everything. God is one, but wise people know it to be many names. So, God can be different things, right? two different people. Right? It's not just one thing, one specific thing. It can be many it different things. God is one thing with three qualities. It's called the Holy Trinity. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh, come on, Mr. Brackenberry. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's three things. One person. Sure. <laughs> and now we're saying the same thing. Brack, you ever went to church? Their God. 
is uh, has that's many everybody. different names, can no. be in many different forms. Now, the prophet that the Hindu worship gave concrete form to, meaning that they had a symbol for them or they had an image for them. You know, we don't have one significant picture of what God is. I guess we uh, kind of uh, classify his son, Jesus Christ, and we give him kind of a picture. But How do you know God's a guy? Jesus, Jesus is God. That's his son. No. Listen. <laughs> but come on, listen, open up your ears and listen. Oh, yes, I got to get no, this. He's got three qualities called the Trinity the Father. Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. What's that inside? Your wife. So all one makes sense. Okay, great. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. They look at as many names. The Brahmin is their god in Hindu worship. It is concrete form to other important gods, the creator, the preserver, and the destroyer. Maybe they have a trinity too. I don't know. But the Brahma, the Vishnu, and were those things that they looked at as well. All right, creator, the preserver, and the destroyer. And then obviously the Vedas we've already talked about in their collection. Well, the Hindu carried that Vita yeah, a little bit further as well and used it, all right, because obviously their teachings were recorded in the uh, sacred text of this. The Vedas was collected, and remember the Vedas, they were a collection of hymns and chants and rituals that the Aryans had. Well, uh, the, the Hindu teachings obviously just carried on. They kind of had that background of <laughs> the uh, Aryans at, at the time and used the Vedas uh, to, you know, signify the things that they had and wanted to <coughs> and I'm gonna stop there. That's what we stopped with the other two. Yeah. Right, put your hand down there. I'm the right to know. <coughs> Mitch Bradbury. That's a good stream. Yeah. 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 So the most important Hindu god sounds is that? like it's Alex. Yeah. A, like a archaeological archaeological um yeah like a group. It's like a cartoon, you know? There's a creator, he's a smart guy, like he's Scooby Doo and Spilma, you know. But the preserver, you know, that's probably uh, whatever his name is, Paul Bond, whatever his name is. Like, you know, so, um, Trap guy? What? Trap guy? I know you're not Fred. 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 Yeah. And Fred. then, like, the destroyer called like Scooby Doo. Wow. Yeah. Let's keep thinking there. I know. <laughs> Start my own religion. I'll be in it with you. I don't know You realize that it'll uh, come to me as a whole part. Yeah. 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 Are you signing notes today, Mr. Brett? Yeah, I think you will. Don't shut them down. I'll sign. Oh, no. Problem with that, buddy. I don't want you to sign my notes. You didn't know. Oh, Look, he's watching your freaking head. Look, he's no. Yeah. <laughs>